Hello Makeup Void, I'm the Makeup Schizophrenic and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is my goal on the internet to reduce the stigma against schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder by talking about relatively normal things. And today, this is a very old palette in terms of the YouTube sphere, but it's very brand new to me. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I am doing just a quick little review of it. I have hyped this palette in my mind for so long and I was finally able to get my hands on it. I did a presentation on yoga at work. It was a two month process. And as a treat to myself, I decided to pick up this palette and I'm just absolutely in love, spoiler alert. And so does this palette live up to my hype? Let's go ahead and get rolling. Okay, so here's the palette. You have 15 shades. You have some cream to matte formulas. I think it's Rebellion, Apart, and Andy. I don't think I used Nude Mauve. I thought I used every shadow in this palette, but I might have not used Nude Mod. But overall, I adore this palette. It has been so long that it's been on my wish list since it came out last year. I was immediately drawn to it, and I just fell absolutely in love. And this is the first Natasha and Denona palette that I have picked up for myself. It was $69. It was expensive enough that I got free shipping at Sephora, so I ended up spending like $73 with tax. This palette is everything that I wanted it to be. It's dark, it's light, it's creamy. I really got to experience the cream to powder formulas. I love the shade Glitz right here. The shade is super reflective. Jude is very pretty. I really love Groove and Rebellion. Rebellion is a cream to matte formula. Psychedelic for me, it's chunky. I will say that. It's it's pretty. I used it on my winged eyeliner today. It's not very noticeable because I have the black underneath. But Psychedelic is a shadow that I wanted just a little bit more pigment underneath it. It is more of a topper shade. I realized that a little too late. But it is a very pretty shadow and it is kind of the start of the show. One shadow that I just don't know why it exists this year is Vivian. This shadow over here. I don't know if it's a shimmer or if it's a matte. I tried using it in a look I did the other day and you couldn't tell that I was using it. It it, it was lackluster. I had an issue with my camera so I couldn't record that look. I have no idea how many looks I was able to record for this video but I have used this palette several times both on camera and off camera. And this has definitely lived up to the hype. I can definitely see myself using this palette on days where I just want something dark and grungy or I want something light and refreshing. I just, this is a palette I really don't have to think about using. It's just so much fun to use. I love it. I should have swatches going up on the screen as I'm talking. But yeah, this is a stellar palette. It was, it definitely lived up to my hype and wanting it. And I did want to mention a couple dupes that I forgot to grab real quick. What I mention is the ColourPop Orchid You Not palette. I don't have swatch comparisons of this, but this is a pretty comparable palette to the Natasha Denona Retro palette. Let me try to do both hands. They have similar color stories. I think this one goes a lot deeper and has a lot more of a purple undertone where this kind of slides under the neutral side. I did a look where I was trying to dupe the vibes of the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I don't think you actually ever saw that video. It just never got the uploading. But I think this is pretty comparable. Definitely more purple. Definitely more nude. But I think they're similar enough palettes if you wanted to get kind of the Natasha Denona vibe of the retro palette but I think a palette that's even more of a dupe is the Profusion Mauves palette. I have used this several times in my eyes and it really gets into some of the warmer tones of the Natasha Denona palette. These are very similar on the eyes. This one doesn't go as deep as I prefer but still like they're they're pretty freaking similar and this one's five dollars so 
definitely something to keep after if you're not ready to pull the plunge on Tasha Denona palette. I do think the formula in this is really stellar for only being $5 and it's a really fun palette to play around with. So I would really recommend either of these two palettes. These would actually complement each other pretty well. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking at the retro palette. There are some affordable options if you want to dupe those vibes. And even though I had those palettes in my collection, I still really want the retro palette. I mean, I have been so enamored with this palette since I got it. I went to Nevada and did family pictures. This is a palette I brought with me. I had plans for an eye look. All of those got throughout thrown out when I got this palette. It's really easy to use. Psychedelic is a little temperamental, but for the most part, I just, I think this palette's really easy to do. Another shadow I'm like, err about is Mod. It's a very pigmented, very light shadow. I tried using it as an inner corner highlight and I'm just too pale to do that. So that's kind of the only other beef but i mean the shadows the shimmers are just really intense they're really pretty there's not much more i can say on the palette it just it's been a pleasure joy pleasure to use up i know this is really old palette i know people aren't looking at this palette anymore it would have been very smart for me to order the natasha denona my dream palette because that came out at the same time as i got this palette but I still want this palette more. I just feel so gravitated towards this palette. The formula lives up to my hype. The color story lives up to my hype. And something I will notice about this is that I actually think like Rebellion and Groove actually go darker on the lid than they look in the pan. Also, apart, it's it's dark. I don't know how to feel about that shade in particular. I don't want to swatch everything, but yeah, it's, this one's a little bit softer on the eyes. I tried to use it to deepen off the crease on some of my looks, but didn't really get that effect. But it's still a pretty shadow. I didn't do a look devoting to a part, but I definitely should have. I mean, there's still so many looks I could do with this palette. It's, it's just amazing. I'll just leave it at that. So now I have several looks to show you with these palettes. And if you don't care about the looks I've created, thank you so much for watching today's video. Give it a like and subscribe. And as always, have joy. First look, I think I'm going to go into the shade Rebellion and start this in my outer corner. Uh, this brush does still have a lot of brown on it, but I use my color switcher to try to get the most of it off. So let's try Rebellion. Is this like a cream to powder formula? I don't know. I feel like it wasn't picking up that much on my brush, but we'll see how this goes. This is my first attempt using this palette, so I don't really have a game plan in mind, but I am bringing this on vacation with me, so I better figure out something soon. And I want this look to be really dark and sharp. I wanted to really focus on my eye shape. I wanted to really be smoky. So we're just taking this and I'm apparently running this all through my crease. Okay, so something like that. I want my outer corner to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go into the shade Groove and see if we can make this more intense. And yes, this is the color I wanted. Oh my goodness, this depth, that's exactly what I wanted to do. It's just that the shades look lighter in the pan, so I was kind of like confused on what I wanted to do. But Groove is definitely adding the rich, the depth that I'm definitely looking for. Okay, so next I am going to choose the shade Amara, which is a little bit lighter than the other shades. I might actually, you know what, let's go into the shade called Andy right here. And let's kind of try to buff out the underneath the brow bone just to add a little bit of a softness to diffuse the first two shades. And wow, this has a lot of purple in it. Really does. I like it, just wasn't expecting it. I haven't swatched this palette yet because I wanted to get my brushes all into this before I did the swatches. But so far, so good. I really like this shade actually. It adds just a different dimension to the look. 
going to add a little bit of the NYX Glitter Primer to set these shimmers off to success. Now for the lid. I really want this to be dark and grungy, so I think I'm going to choose the shade Helio right down here, and I'm going to put this where I laid the glitter primer. So we are looking a little bit like this. I think I'm, I, you know what, I'm really debating it, but I think I'm going to take the shade Psychedelic, the one straight in the middle, and I'm going to put it over Helio, but I'm going to keep it on the, oh wow, this is pretty. That's some glitter in it, but I'm going to focus this on the inside of my lid. I think I want a little bit more depth in this look, so I'm actually going to take the shade apart right here, and I'm going to try packing this on the outside of my lid. I just want, and I'm going to use it to kind of blend the shimmers together, and I just want to see if I can depth, add more depth to the outer corner. Okay, I don't know if that did anything. For the lower lash line, where is my pencil? I'm going to take the Milani Supreme Cold Kajal liner and I'm going to smoke the hell out of this. I'm going to take this sort of dense brush and I'm going to go into the shade Grove and very lightly, but I'm going to use this to blend out the eyeliner. Okay, so here is the finished look, my first impressions with Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I love this look. I love how it turned out. I really love the lower lash line just being really stark stark black and grungy. I think this look turned out beautifully. The formula so far is absolutely stunning. I really love how this look turned out. So let's go ahead and go on to the next look over my lid for today. I want a very smoky, grungy look. And I'm just going to place this all over my crease, trying to keep it down, or not my crease, my lid. want to keep it down low because I'm going to use lighter shadows to pick it up. But I am using this pretty big AOA brush because it's pretty flat, but it also um, is easy to blend with. So I'm going to kind of blend this into the crease now. Now I'm going to take the shade Andy right here and I'm going to start buffing this into the crease. I'm using my It Cosmetics brush and I'm going to keep this still pretty low. Just going to kind of do windshield wiper motions and bring the lightness up. I actually kind of want to do a little bit more depth into the crease so I might dip into another shadow but for now we're going to actually yeah I'm going to buff this a little bit higher and then put something a little bit darker into the crease. So I'm actually going to go into the shade Rebellion now and I'm sort of working that into the crease. It's a smidge lighter than Groove and this is a cream to powder formula and I'm struggling to pick it up on my brush. Okay, here we go. It's actually with the other shade underneath it. It's making it a little lighter and I like that. Yeah, that's pretty. So I'm going to go into the shade Swing on just my finger and I'm going to pack this all over where I put Groove. Alright, now I'm going to take my NYX Epic Ink Liner, that's not it, that is a brow pen. I'm going to take the NYX Epic Ink Liner and I'm going to do a wing. Now I'm going to go into the shade Psychedelic, the center really sparkly shadow. And I'm going to take this fine pointed brush and I'm going to pack Psychedelic over where I put the wing. I don't think I'm going to do the exact outside of the wing but we're gonna definitely bring this in on the lid just packing it over where I laid my winged eyeliner down so here is the finished look so far I'm gonna do my full face of makeup now and I will be right back
Okay, so for the lower lash line, I'm going to go back into groove and I'm going to take this on a small pencil brush and I'm going to start smoking it out on the lower lash line. Something like this. Go back into the shade Andy and I'm going to bring this up just a smidge lower to diffuse groove. Something like this. For the inner corner highlight, I'm just going to take the highlighter I used today, which is Becca Moonstone, and I'm just going to take my finger and be ultra not precise and just kind of pack this on the inner corner. And then I'm going to take, I'm just going to do lower lash line eyeliner and mascara. I'm going to use that Sis Lash Princess and I'm going to use my Milani Supreme Cole Kajal Liner. Okay, so here is the finished look for this last look. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give it a like and subscribe. And as always, have joy.